Hi everyone, so this is going to be the first uh, video on this channel and kind of what I want to talk about in this video is my college application process and my stats and kind of what I've learned throughout this whole journey. People on YouTube who have like these crazy stats and get into these crazy colleges but at the end of the day uh, not everyone's a valedictorian and uh, not everyone has a perfect GPA and we all have our uh, kind of uh, distinct college application process and I kind of want to share mine. So the colleges I applied to were, were Brown, Baylor, Tech, uh, RPI, it's BSMD, and just a disclaimer, I applied to a lot of BSMDs and kind of um, regret, regret the number of I applied to, but I'll just continue listing them. MSSU plus it's BSMD, and a BSMD is just a program that goes from college to medical school. And the Rochester, uh, RIMS, BSMD, Hofstra and its BSMD, OU and its program, which is the BSMD, uh, NSU and its BSDO. DO is kind of a different uh, degree from an MD. It's instead of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine, I believe. And I also applied to Tulsa one that BSMD and a and M. I didn't apply for that program. Instead, I applied for Biomedical Sciences, UCLA for biology, biology and Physics, UC Berkeley for Biomedical Engineering, UT Austin for Biomedical Engineering, UT Dallas for Biomedical Engineering, and Stony Brook for its BSMD as well. UPIT as well for its BSMD, and Arizona for its BSMD. And I'll just kind of share my results. So starting from the top, Brown, I got rejected from the school and the program. Baylor, I was, uh, I got the interview first round and then rejected after. But I did apply for this major that's called the Science Research Fellows major. Uh, you may not know that one because it's lesser known, but it was pretty competitive. I basically had to go through an interview and then they selected 10 people. So. And the tech, I got into the school, but I was rejected from the program. And RPI, kind of the same thing. Uh, MSSU, I got the interview for the program, and we basically just toured the campus and did the interview. And then I got rejected after the interview. And I think the program was pretty nice. It's just, um, it's definitely kind of far. So it's in Missouri, and uh, it's seven years, three years has free tuition and the four years you go to um, <clears throat> KC Medical School, KCU Medical School, yeah. And from Rochester, I got into the school but rejected from the program. Hofstra, I was waitlisted. OU, I was waitlisted from the BSMD program. NSU, I got the interview but I wasn't able to go. And Tulsa, I got rejected. A and M, I got into the biomedical sciences one. UCLA, the biology and physics degree, I was waitlisted. UC Berkeley, I was accepted. No, sorry, waitlisted. Uh, UT Austin, I was accepted for its biomedical engineering program. UT Dallas, I was uh, accepted. Sorry, I had to cut the video. SBU, I was rejected, UPIT rejected, and Arizona rejected. So the thing about BSMDs is they're really competitive. Um, on average, a lot of these had a minimum SAT score of 1450 or higher, so I was a 1450, so there wasn't a, a lot of hope in that one. And another part of the BSMD is you also have to write a lot of supplements, which definitely take time. And I'll just show you the amount of essays I had to write for this whole process real quick. So here I have my essay pulled up and right now you're looking at 80 pages of hard work throughout the whole school year. So yeah, this definitely took time. And if you are up for applying to 20 different colleges, you should consider this. Okay, now that you've seen my results, I'm gonna go into the stats that got me in or uh, that got me rejected. So here we go. Uh, for the SAT, I got a 1450, and the split was 700 for reading, and math was 750. And 
Uh, my super score is 1470, but not a lot of colleges really look at super score anymore. I only remember Baylor asking for my super score, but I think that was about it. And APs only took two. Chinese and uh, physics, I got a four on both. Don't ask me how I got a four on Chinese, but let's just say I crammed for that thing. Uh, and in junior year, uh, physics was the only AP offered uh, at my high school. And in senior year, I took microecon, AP physics two, AP bio, and AP lit. And a total of the APs at our school is only six, so that was really small. And I was ranked. I was 17 out of 180. And uh, I wrote a research paper and a book, which I did not publish, but I would highly suggest for you guys to actually publish the book that if you were going to write one. And I'll just talk briefly about the research paper. I didn't apply it. I didn't publish it on some fancy journal. Instead, I just uh, published it on this website called RARS which is basically, uh, it's called the Roars Polygens Journal, and it's for high school students. Even though it's not well known, but I would highly suggest publishing on that one if you're looking to, because there's no fee, and uh, it's an easy application process. It only takes like three weeks, because most of these journals, they make you pay a lot of money, and I don't think that's worth it for high school students. And you don't need to actually do scientific research, because this research paper, I was never in a lab. I just wrote about this topic that I was kind of doing during my time at an observership program I did in junior year in the summer. So yeah, I would recommend that journal to anyone. So now let's go down my activities that I did. So in ninth grade, I just did swimming and it wasn't for the school yet. That was kind of uh, for a different club I was in. And for 10th grade, I did uh, number sense, UIL, and UIL science, which are both kind of Olympiads, but for Texas, basically. And just a tip for those wanting to apply to UT Austin, they love people who participate in UIL because uh, they actually made uh, UIL. And when I refer to UIL, I'm talking about the University Interscholastic League. So if you're in Texas, I would suggest you participate in that. And it's a, it's an only Texas competition, so not others, no other states can participate. And in my junior year of summer, I, uh, wait, I'm missing something, sorry. I also volunteered at my library during the junior year, which I got around 100 volunteer hours. And in the summer, I volunteered at UD Southwestern and also did an observership there. And... I also volunteered at Children's Health Hospital during the summer. In senior year, I started a, a club with the NHS chapter. It was like the student mentoring club that I started. And I also was a math accounts tutor for the beginning of the year. And let's see, sorry. Oh. I also participated in the EKG practicum class in my high school, which we kind of went to different sites and it was basically clinical rotations. Went to different clinics, did some shadowing, and then the year, at the end of the year, I got uh, my certificate in BLS, uh, my EKG tech cert, and patient care tech cert. It's just the only thing right now is I can't find a job with any of them because part-time jobs are really hard to find. See if I'm missing anything. Oh, and my awards. I'll list some of my awards. In 10th grade, I was awarded the student of the month and student of the year, which we called Mr. SHS because that was the name of our high school. And I also was the district champion for uh, three years in high school. <laughs> and I was also a district, tramp district champion for UAL Science. Uh, in 2023 and I was also a state alternate for number since for all three years I was in there so yeah even though I did not uh, really qualify for state but I did like place high in state in, in regards to my district scores so I, I definitely put that on my common app 
even though I never actually qualified for state. And also a tip for putting your um, awards is also scale your awards to the colleges because they don't really know the specifics. So what I mean by scale is out of how many people are in your competition and what place you got. So an example is uh, in my junior year, I placed uh, my district score was the fifth highest in the state during that time out of 700 kids. So I just put five out of 700 uh, or fifth out of 700 highest score during district 2023. So yeah, that's one way to kind of show how big that award is. And also, I also want to give you some tips for the, like some takeaways really. So one thing looking back is I don't think it was financially worth it at the end of the day because 20 colleges is expensive because I'm talking about the college application fee and many of these supplemental applications also costed money. So in total, I think I'd spent around a thousand dollars. I would not suggest that to anyone because at the end of the day, this is college, not medical school. And I think one thing that led me to apply to so many BSMDs was I was kind of intimidated by the whole pre-med process. Because in pre-med, you have to have a good GPA, you have to take the MCAT. And to me, the BSMD seemed like a straightforward route I can easily go through without having to take the MCAT and, and many programs. But that, at the end of the day, I think what people need to realize is many of these BSMDs take more work. Like the course load is oftentimes harder at this program than the ordinary pre-med. And another thing I want people to consider is in BSMDs, uh, it's kind of going into one major kind of, because I went into biomedical engineering and I don't think as a BSMD a student I would be able to study uh, that field or kind of the bright side of a pre-med is you, you also get to explore, basically that's what I'm trying to say is I was kind of interested also into the engineering side and I want to take time to explore. And the BSMD is you kind of have to become a doctor. You kind of have to finish that degree. And if you don't want to become a doctor after two years, you're kind of screwed because you spent all that time and grinding to be a doctor. But now let's say you want to become uh, an engineer and it's kind of good luck to you. <laughs> and also one thing for choosing colleges I want to recommend to you guys is uh, definitely uh, choose a college that is financially feasible. Like it's not too expensive. Like one thing that kept me from uh, going to Baylor because they had this really great program. It was called the Science Research Fellows Program. It was like the only one in the whole country with uh, only accepting 10 people was, it was expensive to attend Baylor. Even though I had an, a scholarship of around 80,000 over four years, the tuition or the total cost itself per year was 54,000. So I did the math and that is around 216,000. And I don't know how much uh, it actually is. So it could be around 240 actually, but I don't think spending $200,000 is worth it for college considering I'm going to be a pre-med and th that's a lot of mo money down the road. So in the end, I chose to stay away from Baylor because of the cost and because of the rigor because their minimum SAT was 1450 and that was me. And one thing, a part of this is imposter syndrome. When you're around a uh, very highly performing applicants, you kind of fall behind and kind of wonder why you're there. So I didn't want to like feel that way. I wanted to um, be able to fit in, but also to be challenged, right? It's not that I wanted to shy away from challenge. It's just that ranking would be hard and I would be uh, kind of try putting a unreasonable amount of work, if you know what I mean. Because instead I just went to UT Dallas because it was closer, it was cheaper, and a place where I could fit in, where it wasn't too hard. Because one thing people need to consider is a college can be too hard. So uh, that's kind of what imposter syndrome stems from, is you believe you're inadequate compared to everyone else. So. Yeah, and also one tip I want to give you guys is 
During this college application process, do not let scholarships slip your mind. Because many scholarships have very strict deadlines. And if you miss it, you miss it. And they're not very well known because, you know, gatekeeping. A lot of students gatekeep, so. Big scholarships like Coca-Cola, Burger King, uh, the Gates Foundation, they all have due dates before October, I believe. So definitely keep your eyes out there. And also many college-specific scholarships also have uh, due dates. One would be the Eugene McDermott Scholar Scholarship at uh, UT Dallas, which is a full ride. And that uh, deadline is November 1st. And if you miss it, you can't apply again. And it's a great opportunity too. And so just to sum everything up, I kind of just went to UT Dallas to pursue my biomedical engineering degree and I would go down the pre-med track and hopefully go to UT Southwestern for medical school. So yeah, I think that is about it and I hope everyone enjoyed. Um, uh, I hope you can all subscribe and I will be posting content in the future since Common App is going to be released in August. I will definitely make some videos about how I wrote my personal statement and how I got into UT Austin for biomedical engineering and kind of uh, a guide for the whole college application process and also applying to scholarships because the fact is there are a lot of scholarships out there and I want to help everyone to be able to find those scholarships and be a good candidate for those. So yeah, thank you for watching.